So welcome everybody to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Steve Kiyama and I'm the owner of Action Coach Western Fairfax. Today we're gonna speak with Sharon Oliver about her business and her journey to business ownership, some of the challenges, best practices, and maybe share a peek into what's, what it's really like to build and operate a business. So if this is your first time with this channel, please be sure to like and subscribe and get notifications when we drop conversations like this one. Sharon, welcome, and thank you for being here today. So thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. And would you mind giving us a brief interview uh, or a brief overview of your background? Tell us a little bit about your business. So my business is commercial real estate, leasing, sales, and consulting. Uh, we primarily specialize in office leasing and sales. And that's been a little up and down lately based on, on the market. So it's mm -hmm. been challenging, um, but I've been doing it a long time and, um, you know, have many clients and all of our businesses in the Washington, Virginia, uh, Maryland metropolitan area. So we're, it's a very local business um, and it's a business that's provided me a lot of fulfillment along the way. Okay. Who are your typical kinds of clients and in a way, what are the challenges that they're struggling with and you're helping them with at this stage? So we do um, both landlord and tenant work. So we have clients on both sides of the table, if yeah. you will. And also we do sellers and buyers. So okay. both sides of the table on the sales side. Um, so let's just take a piece of that for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, one of our clients um, is trying to lease out space right now they're uh, an owner occupier landlord okay mm -hmm. they used to own a building we sold that building for them we helped them buy land and build a new building mm -hmm. they occupy about 60 percent of that building 40 percent of it's available for lease okay it delivered um a year a little bit over a year ago um and the market's been very weak during that time so right. very few tenants and so they struggle with the uh, how do you find tenants in a market? How do you um, entice them to come to the building? This building has a lot of amenities. Um, it's in a great close-in location, and yet it's been very quiet because mm -hmm. the flip side of this is representing tenants, and almost all tenants are um, relatively at a standstill. They're either downsizing um, or they're doing nothing because they have no idea what the future is. And yeah. the problem is that everybody went home during COVID and people just aren't back at the office. And even when you see in the news that people are back, they're back three days a week. They're not back five days a week. They don't need all the space that they had. So we have a severe oversupply of office space in the market. So as a landlord, that means there's not as many tenants in the market looking for your space. As a tenant, you're trying to get out of your lease. You're trying to renegotiate what you're doing. You're trying to figure out how to just get through mm -hmm. and um, you know, remain viable while you're trying to figure out your real estate. Yeah. So, you know, those are the challenges yeah. you know, of the day right now. Yeah. You know, yeah. and on the, on the leasing, on the sales side, people don't understand what the values are. Okay. Buyers want to pay less and less. Sellers want to hold on to as much as they can, as far mm -hmm. as value. Mm -hmm. And those values are dropping quickly and mm -hmm. that's problematic um, in the yeah. market. So, Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent of the 2008, 2009 period of time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's move into what makes your business so special. What makes your business unique? Why do customers pick you to represent them? So I've been in this business a long time. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked for large brokerage firms. I was a partner at JBG, which is the largest local developer. And I left there to start my own firm because I wanted to be able to give clients um, the best service that they could find in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So typically when a client of ours is looking to hire someone, they're looking for someone senior that has the experience that they're looking for, mm -hmm. but they're also looking for someone who really cares about them, who's looking out for their best interest. And I would say that um, my partner and I developed a business that put the client first. Okay. To me, relationships are everything. Mm -hmm. Taking care of the client is what my business is about. Without mm -hmm. doing that, there is no business. Yeah. So I'm not a broker who just worries about how to get the deal done as fast as possible, move on to the next thing, make the next deal. I'm in it for the long term. 
-hmm. I try to take their side of everything and look at it through their eyes. And, and I, I just stick with them. Okay. I have clients that I've had for 40 years at this point. Um, so to me, it's a long-term, uh, type of relationship and you need those relationships, you know, in, in any business, I think, but particularly yeah. this business is a relationship driven business. Yeah. Very much of a service business in that respect. What's one thing you wish more people knew about your business? <laughs> Well, I, I guess I, you know, what I think is that everybody that does a deal in the commercial real estate business should have a broker mm -hmm. because people think that it's just kind of dinner talk, you know, how's the office market, how are deals going, what's happening. And they don't understand all the nuances and that you have to, it's really technical on the, on the contract side and on the deal making side and what you can do. And I wish people understood that it wasn't just quite so simple. Mm -hmm. you know? It, you really need somebody on your side protecting you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of details involved in that, that most of us lay people don't really know. They, they should also understand that you don't make every deal that you ever try to make. So, you know, people think, you know, what will happen is someone will say, well, you made a lot of money on that deal or this deal did whatever, but you might've done 20 that didn't, you know, you were in them and they didn't even happen. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of up and down in our business. Yeah. This leads me kind of to another topic, which is marketing, which is something vital to just about every business that I can think of. What's the number one marketing strategy that's worked for you? So we do mostly um, business that's either referral or repeat. We've developed, I, I think you have to make a name for yourself. You have mm. to be marketing yourself in our business, not only the firm, and you have to have a reputation mm -hmm. that precedes you. Okay, mm -hmm. So that people know, you know, when they're looking for someone in the in the commercial real estate business, they've heard of you. They know who you are. I had a recent client. I have a client right now that I finally said, "How did you find me?" How did, you know, because they, it was so out of the box of the normal client that I would have. Mm -hmm. And they went, you know, we were looking for someone that had the expertise in the area that we're in, um, and we came across your name and we did research on you. So we make sure that we're, you know, we're marketed out on the um, web. You know, mm, someone can good. look me up, they can find me, they can see what I've done. Um, and we use references all the time. Okay. I mean, and, and that's really how we get our business. Um, yeah. You know, we're not doing straight up advertising for say this, this is to me as a people business, it's yeah. all about who, you know, and what the contact is. Yeah. There's a, there's a little bit of information out in the universe that uh, talks about a report McKenzie did some years back that indicated that uh, um, people are about 80% of the way to a final decision by the time they want to talk to a salesperson. And, and today we have so much opportunity to do the research that goes with that. Yeah. If, if I have to go, if I have to compete with five other firms for the business, mm. the percent to of winning that and this was true even when i was a national firm the percent of winning that is like five percent yeah if you know the person or know someone who knows the person or you have some connection it, you know it moves that percentage up much greater i mean it's, you know sometimes the decisions made before they interview five people they just have to pick they have to do it so they've got a code that says five right so yeah. you know yeah. they're in lies issue but but 90 percent of our business you know, comes from context that we have in yeah. some way, shape, or form. That makes perfect sense to me. So we've spent a bunch of time focused on the business. Let's talk a little bit about you. Why did you choose to go into business for yourself as opposed to choosing to work for someone else? And what was that transition like? What did you experience? Um, so it's interesting. Commercial real estate is a business where you're kind of always in it for yourself. Okay. So even when you work for a large company, I was a grub analyst. I was a manager there. I ran, you know, a division here and I still always felt like I had to bring in enough business for everybody that was on my team. Uh -huh. Okay. And when you're out marketing, they're not really hiring grub analysts or the firm they're hiring Sharon Oliver and whoever the team is. So mm -hmm. it's very people focused business. It's very mm -hmm. much, you know, who are you not who is the firm? Mm hmm you know, unless you're a, a big for you know, a very large national firm, then in that case, you know, maybe somebody just has a national account and that's just the way it goes. Yeah. But, um, but for the most part you're, and you're on your own and you're making your own money. 
Okay, you're not getting paid a salary by a large company. Whatever you bring in, you know, hundred percent commission, isn't that, it? And it's coming back out. So yeah. it's all about how you're individually doing, not how the company's doing. And it's you know part of what I really like about the business is that the sky's the limit. Okay, as a woman in in business in the '70s and '80s, it was up to me to go make it work. And mm -hmm. you know, you weren't there was no ceiling. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever deals I was doing, I got paid on. Okay. If I wasn't doing deals, well, just like the guys, you aren't getting paid. And that was just, <laughs> yeah. that, that was just the way it went. Yeah. Um, so I left uh, Grabenels to go to work for JVG as partner. Mm -hmm. um, they'd been a longtime client of mine. I did a lot of their business mm -hmm. and um, it was a development firm. And what I found was I was really a deal person more than a, de a development person. Mm -hmm. And so um, I teamed with Filmini, who'd been a person that I had known for a long time, had worked with and for, and um, we started meeting Oliver mm -hmm. and we really felt like, to me, it was no different than, you know, being at a large firm. I was just mm -hmm. going in, I was selling, essentially we were, Phil and I were selling ourselves and our services and we had the same clients that we'd had before. Yeah. <laughs> and, right. You know, uh, we were able to, um, to make that work. We wanted to really be able to customize service. When you hire a national firm, you get a team of people and, and the youngest people are the ones that do a lot of the work. The senior people kind of come in and, and they're working on pieces of it, but not all of it. Yeah. At our firm, you get us and yeah. it's okay. all of it. So you get the seasoned um, thing. So we were trying to give that kind of service to a client ah, and be available for yeah. a client so that you just That's an important spread so thin. We could pick and choose what we what we could work on. Awesome. 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 That's an important piece is having the real experience there. Cool. Where do you see the business going in the next three to five years? Well, I think that's changing every day. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, the line used to be survive until 25. And I was just mm -hmm. at a conference where it was more like 27. Um, so I, I think it's a changing business. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I don't think office leasing will ever be the same as it was. Mm -hmm. I think there'll always be a demand for office space, though. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you need to align yourself with clients mm -hmm. um, who, A, need the space, or B, have a nice enough project that you can get at least. Because mm -hmm. what's happened is the B buildings are just going away. They're being converted. And we've done some of the sales for conversions. We've done... Um, Two in Alexandria, uh, one was a 200,000 square foot office building that's being mm -hmm. converted right now. Um, and one was a building where uh, there were three 40,000 square foot buildings. They bought the middle piece of a, of a spread out project on the river. Mm -hmm. It's being converted to luxury condos. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot of conversion. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the inventory of office will decrease because of that, because buildings will just come out of the inventory and they'll be converted yeah. into residential. I think there's a huge demand for residential, um, not only in this market, but in the country. Yes. And I think affordable housing is going to be more and more important as yes. an issue. Um, I, one of the things I kind of do in my spare time is I chair the board for the commercial real estate center at uh, GW. Mm -hmm. And our main focus at this point is affordable housing. And, you know, so we educate students in all aspects of commercial real estate, but then as a research project and the things that the, that are really focused on, it's affordable housing. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, that's, things are going to move sort of in the residential direction. It's moving there quickly now. I mm -hmm. think there'll still be demand on the office side. Um, I think, you know, there's always the discussion about whether it'll become more of a consultative business instead of a commission-based business. I don't know. That's really hard because it's hard to get the senior brokers to convert to being a consultant and getting paid that way. So life goes on. I think it'll, it'll kind of continue. It'll just be, it'll, you have to be nimble. You have to be able to focus on a lot of different things. You can't be sort of only focused on one piece of the business. You have to be aware of what's the trends and you where's do. the demand going to go? Where are the customers going to go? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. When thinking about future in a business, building teams is one of the pieces of it. Where does that fit in your plan right now? Do you have intent to build a team? We have, we have purposely kept ourselves small mm -hmm. um, because we want the focus to be on the client, not on mm -hmm. internally just uh, bringing people up that way. Mm -hmm. um, 
we have a group of five brokers right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Probably remain that size. Yeah. Um, and everybody, we basically say there's no babysitting at our office. <laughs> no, <laughs> everybody's a really good broker, and they are self sufficient in and of themselves. That doesn't mean that we don't team within the firm. We do. Okay, mm -hmm. all the time we work together on lots of things. Mm -hmm. um, but we want it to be. Um, we want it really. We really want that client focus. Not so much. Let's grow the business and then make it. I, I once upon a time worked at a brokerage firm where the senior person thought that the real purpose of having a brokerage firm was to make it as big as possible. And that's how you could be the most successful. Um, eventually that business just went away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because I don't think that can be your main focus. Well, that kind of gets me to a little bit of a, a, a another question here. How would you describe your leadership style in this, in this game? And you've kind of touched around it a bit there. Inclusive. Um, I think it's, you know, to try to make everybody be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. um, we don't work top down. We work on a pretty flat um, system okay. mm -hmm. and, you know, everybody pulls their weight Yeah, okay. and everybody's part of a team. Good, 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 good. What's been your approach to hiring and retaining team members? Well, we haven't had a problem. Everybody that we've hired is, has been there. So That's a very that, good statement right that's there. That's not yeah. been an issue. Um, we've been uh, rather selective on who we've hired. Okay. Again, trying to keep it small. Good, good. Yeah, we've had people approach us and say, you know, can we just come? And they, what they want is really to be a part of us and then have us give them enough business and make enough money. That's not our program. Our program is everybody has to contribute to the whole First of all, that tells me that you've got people that want to work for you and, and that allows you some choice, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So for everybody listening, we've covered a lot of ground in this conversation today. And for those of you who are watching, I highly encourage you to save this and come back a few times because we've touched a couple of really good nuggets here. As we kind of get towards wrapping up, I got a few rapid fire questions for you. So quick top of the head thoughts. What would you say is the key to success for you? Uh, taking care of my clients the best way that I can mm -hmm. has been the key to success. Awesome. You know, again, I, I look back and say it's all about the relationships. It is. Yeah, it is. It's really a relationship business. That's fantastic. If you encountered somebody this afternoon who was ready to go into business for themselves, whether into real estate or something else, what's the one piece of advice you would want to give that person? First off, I would tell them it's the best thing I've ever done. Okay. I mean, there's people that are afraid to make that. And mm -hmm. I think you need to put aside your fear. Mm -hmm. And if you're ready to be in business for yourself, um, make the plunge. Take, you know, cool. take that, take that risk. And I, I never, I never felt like it was such a big risk that it was something that would never work out. I always thought this is going to be fine. Good confidence. That's a key piece of it. Yeah. What is one book you're reading now or have read recently that you find impactful? So I'm reading a book right now called Unreasonable Hospitality. Mm -hmm. um, probably not a book that many people have maybe heard of or know about, but it's written by um, a guy who is in the hospital, is in the restaurant business basically, but it applies to everybody. And it really talks about the importance of um, how you treat your clients, how you, you know, that, that you can't just be the best at providing the service. Mm -hmm. You have to bring those people into a relationship and have a relationship with them so that they understand you're the go-to person because you've taken care of them better than anybody could possibly uh, take care of them, and you exceed expectations. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> if you had to choose one area of your business that you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Uh, I would say that the best thing we could do is uh, I'd like to have more time to just be out there meeting people, mm. but you have to make that trade-off between you're working on something versus just bringing in the business. So that that's always a gap in our business you know mm -hmm. how much time you can spend networking mm -hmm. versus how much time you're really working on deals cool cool so. cool what's most inspiring to you today that's an interesting question you know i i, I think the most inspiring thing for me is um feeling like i've done everything i can to make the business better and yet and left nothing on the table good good Good. 
How can others learn more about you and your company and how can they get in touch with you? They can go to uh, meanyoliver.com. Best place to learn about our business is our website. Our contact information is up on the website. Perfect, perfect. Happy to talk to anybody. <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. So fantastic. Thank you very much, Sharon. This has been fantastic. Thank you for joining us and sharing all of your insights. So thank you for having me.